Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Mobile App Academy, where we show you how to build and configure mobile apps live on the Now platform. My name is Charlie Steiner, product marketer here at ServiceNow, and today's session will actually be continuing our mobile classic migration series started in the past few Mobile App Academies with how to migrate your UI policies, mobile UI rules. And for some extra help, we do have our mobile classic office hour sessions, which will be tomorrow and the next couple of Wednesdays of March. Uh, so do be sure to check that out in the community and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But if you are joining us for the first time, we wanna welcome you to Mobile App Academy, which is a live building series that focuses on managing and building out mobile apps in real time. We have product experts on hand to provide guidance and best practices and answer any of your questions in the chat. So we host these sessions every couple of weeks every two weeks, excuse me, here on Zoom at 10 a.m. Pacific. And you can find the recording of this session posted to our YouTube playlist Thursday morning specific time as well. And that playlist does contain all of our past recordings. So do be sure to check those out as well. A few additional resources I want to call to your attention before we get started today is our mobile community page is just chock full of great Awesome stuff, you know, getting started guides, labs, um, best practices, how to's, implementation, white papers, uh, and a recently updated for Rome, a best practice uh, for best practice for building and configuring. So, you know, UX, UI, um, white paper that was recently updated. So, check that out. That is in our featured content section. And on the right is our App Academy playlist where you can find awesome sessions ranging across mobile from deploying now mobile to getting started with mobile card builder, mobile app builder, and a couple most recent sessions on how to migrate from mobile classic. So all that can be found in our YouTube playlist. So do be sure to subscribe um, so you never miss a session in case you can't join us live for one week. One more thing to note is we do have sister academies across service now that do wonderful, wonderful stuff uh, in HR, in platform foundation, a little bit more developer focused in reporting and analytics, everything now intelligence, and of course, a virtual agent. So if you're interested in any of these sessions, do be sure to check them out. Let them know you came from us, show them some love, and you can find them by navigating to the forums tab on community and going to their respective pages where they will be linked on their page. And as previously mentioned, we do have a, an ongoing series, a weekly series for mobile classic migration. So if you have in-depth questions or you're struggling with something, or you just you know, want some feedback on something that you're working on with regarding to mobile classic, our Zoom is open 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. And we'll be here to answer any of your questions and walk you through anything we can um, regarding mobile classic migration. So you can check that Zoom link out on our community page. It is a featured tab, so it'll be easy, uh, easy to catch and easy to sign up for. And we hope to see you tomorrow, or if not tomorrow, the next couple of weeks. So be sure to use this resource. And if we need to extend beyond the next couple of weeks in March, uh, we'll do so at, at a later date. But for now, we'd love to see you tomorrow or in the next couple of weeks. All that out of the way. David Haw, as always, our fearless mobile leader, will kick us off on today's session. Thanks for that intro, Charlie. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Mobile App Academy. My name is David Haw, and I'll be your host for today. Um, we also have a handful of folks um, representing our mobile team today. We have Charity Cats, uh, David Merch, and Keener, and uh, maybe a couple other groups who might roll in uh, throughout the session. But uh, they're all here to help answer your questions along the way. So don't be afraid to ask your questions in the chat or the Q&A panel, okay? Um, but to kick off today's academy, um, we're gonna show you how you can apply UI policies to your cards and input form screens using mobile UI rules. Uh, in last week's session, we showed you how to configure actions using input form screens. So we're gonna take another step further on how you can apply your policies to those uh, as well as to your cards, okay? And I'll also show you all the different ways that you can use mobile UI rules as well. This is our part three in a four part series. Um, in our next week's session, we're gonna be covering our very last session on um, mobile classic. Okay, so stay tuned. Um, just to quickly review for today's schedule, 
This will be about a 40 minute session. Um, we'll start off with a quick 10 minute overview on our goals for today, what we will implement and how to get started. And then we'll jump into the exercise. We'll cover the basics on what it's like to build uh, a mobile UI from scratch for the Asian app, and then show you some tips and tricks along the way. Um, and then we'll open up to some open Q&A afterwards, okay? Uh, oh, before I jump to that, actually, um, if you are looking for more hands-on training, as Charlie has mentioned, um, I recommend that you check out some of our earlier mobile app academies. We actually covered a couple videos called mobile UI, rule, uh, mobile UI rules for policies in Quebec, as well as a video on applying styling conditions on mobile cards using uh, mobile UI rules. And those videos explain why we introduced the concept of mobile UI rules and why we had to migrate away from using UI styles and UI policies. So definitely check those out if you haven't already. And then Charlie can also throw a link in the chat. Okay. But with all of that said, let's jump into our overview for mobile UI rules. And if you're not already familiar, mobile UI rules is what we use to modify the appearance or the behaviors of your mobile cards and input form screens, right? The mobile cards are, you know, that's like your mobile view on that screen. It's like the header. Um, and then the input form screens, it's that action window that pops up for the user to input whatever they want, right? Um, and some examples of this include, you know, being able to hide fields, make fields mandatory or read only, or maybe even applying your UI styling conditions. Um, on platform or, or mobile classic, you might be familiar with using, um, uh, you know, mobile UI policies to do these sort of things, but for mobile, um, we use completely different tables. Uh, so you're going to need to recreate any policies that you might already have on the platform by using mobile UI rules. They don't auto just automatically migrate over. Your admin will need to configure each policy that they want to be able to apply it to their Asian or now mobile experience. Okay. Um, and then for the folks who have some experience already developing on our mobile platform, mobile UI rules is a new concept that we introduced with Mobile Card Builder um, starting in Quebec. And the important thing to understand here is that our investment into mobile UI rules will allow us to expand into further use cases that our old legacy tables could not support in the past um, for UI styles and mobile UI policies. And just to highlight some of these, um, as of Rome, we're now able to support onload and on-chain triggers. So you have more control on how you want to apply your policies using mobile UI rules. Um, we also support read-only inputs on your input form screens. Uh, and that will give you control on, you know, what that what your users can see and what they can update on their actions. Um, and we also support things like field value calculations, uh, date time calculations, and the ability to disable the buttons on your mobile cards. And if you want to learn about uh, any one of those, all those details can be found on our product docs. We've um, uh, updated uh, quite a bit if you check out either the Rome or San Diego docs. Okay. Uh, in today's session, uh, I want to focus on how you can build a couple mobile UI rules from scratch. This is just a quick screenshot to show you how your classic UI policies are going to be different from our new mobile apps policies. Um, all of your pre-existing UI policies will not migrate over, right? Um, you'll need to create uh, a mobile UI rule for each policy that you want to apply to your agent or now mobile client. But I, I do want to emphasize that on the bright side, um, likely when you're deploying one of our apps, you're likely leveraging one of our out-of-the-box experiences, such as Field Service Mobile App. And thankfully, <clears throat> those BU teams have created dozens of different UI policies that you might want to leverage as a starting point. So it's just a matter of exploring what's available out of the box and then figuring out what other policies you want to migrate over to your existing experience. Um, and then, you know, building out the rest using Mobile App Builder or Mobile Card Builder. Okay. <clears throat> uh, there has been some enhancements that we've introduced recently, um, something I want to highlight. Uh, we int recently introduced a new update through the ServiceNow store that will drastically improve your mobile UI configurations for cards. Um, if you, you know, have some experience configuring mobile UI rules in Quebec, you might be familiar with you know, how tricky it was to map fields to text elements uh, uh, to the rules that you want to apply to those. You know, the, the experience wasn't, you know, very intuitive with that first release, but once you've updated 
<clears throat> your mobile card build plug plugin to version 19.3, you'll find that there's going to be a new visual interface inside of mobile card builder that will allow you to quickly build your rules and then point them to the fields or components that you want on your card. The fields that you see on that card, you can just point and click and then apply the rules directly to them, right? So it's, it's a much easier experience, okay? For input form screens, the configuration experience is, is pretty much the same as it was in Quebec. We'll be using the platform UI to configure policies uh, to get those applied to your input form screens. Uh, but thankfully, we won't have to map any text elements to rules. So uh, it's not as confusing as uh, it was to configure it for cards. It's just a matter of defining the conditions and the role, role actions that you want. And I'll show you what it looks like during our exercise for today. So it'll make more sense, okay? But with that said, let's go ahead and um, uh, jump into our three uh, common use cases that I wanna cover for today. Um, our first priority is being able to create a mobile UI role that allows me to highlight records depending on the condition that I want, okay? so that. That's basically a UI style. Um, uh, second is being able to create mobile UI rules that are applied to my mobile cards. So I can do things like hide a field on the card if the condition's met, okay? And then lastly is being able to create UI rules that control the behavior of our input form screens for those actions, right? So we're gonna create a rule that makes our, um, you know, short description input read only uh, when a work order task is assigned to region or whatever that condition that I want it to be. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump into our instance now and I'll start um, with this first use case. So um, we'll go back to the home. Uh, just a quick reminder when we want to build policies or roles that apply to our mobile cards, then we use Mobile Card Builder. But if we're building it for our input form screens, then we'll be using the platform UI, okay? For our first use case, we're gonna build a UI rule that applies UI styling to our cards. So um, if you look at my mobile device on the left-hand uh, nav, let's say that, uh, you know, if um, the priority for any of these tasks are high or, or critical, I want, you know, one of these fields highlighted up so that it indicates to my agent that this record is important, okay? Um, and to do this, I'm going to first jump into Mobile Card Builder. And I'll show you this new experience. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay. So the first thing that I want to do, I think this zoom should be okay, is I need to find which card that I want to configure. Okay. Um, and if you're not quite sure what the name of your card is, I would recommend going into Platform UI and look up their screens. And then I know that the screen lives on my home tab <clears throat> for my work. Um, but I believe if I click on see all, uh, it gives me some kind of indication. Uh, I think this screen, because I looked it up earlier, it's called work order task. Um, and I know that this is coming from the field service scope. So it's probably gonna be one of these two. Um, I want the list screen. So I'm gonna open up this first one here. And I'm gonna show you where you can find the name of your card just to confirm you're configuring the right thing, okay? I'm gonna go into the list item config. And then there's gonna be a card name, work order task name card. And this is the card that I want to configure. If, there, uh, if I want to be able to apply this policy here, okay? Or UI rule, sorry. So now that I know the name of it, I'm just gonna type in work order task. Um, and notice that, you know, you also have filters over here. If you want to find it through Mobile Card Builder, you can define the scope as well as the screen as well. Um, so I think this is it right here. Or order task main, I don't see any other main card or main, let me confirm. It's gonna be main card, okay. So we'll open this up. And here you're gonna start seeing something new here. So I've updated my mobile card plugin to the latest 19.3 from the ServiceNow store. And you're gonna start seeing this new tab called UI rules. Um, and you're also gonna see some of these yellow indicators here. Um, 
But basically, essentially what you can do now is you can actually just click one of these fields or text elements and then add a UI rule directly to it. So it's much, it's a much faster experience. Before you had to jump into the platform UI, figure out what is the text element name, and then you know find what target uh, it was. And it was kind of a jumbled experience. But now it's 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 a lot more intuitive. Um, and you can see that with these yellow indicators that there's already some policy, uh, rules that are being applied. You can see that you know out of the box, I think field service built like these 12 um, UI rules. Ignore these test ones. These are the ones I've created to for testing earlier for my sake. Um, but you can see that there is a rule here for value. Um, and if you look at the ones highlighted, uh, if you click on this little yellow trigger, it shows you what is being done to that, um, to that element. So I don't see it doing anything here. Um, maybe it's just the wrong condition, but I don't really care about that. What I want to do is I want to be able to highlight this number field anytime that the priority is, uh, let's say, critical. So I'm going to make this work order task highlight in red just to make sure it pops out a bit uh, to let my agent know that it's an important task. OK, so I'm going to create a new rule. Um, and I'll start by clicking on this text element and create add rule. OK, and I can name this. Uh, you know, highlight a number when uh, you know, priority is critical. And then for the condition, this gives you uh, some condition syntax examples um, and some you know, best practices on how to define them. Uh, what I like to do is uh, I'll go into, my, into the platform UI. Uh, I'm going to duplicate a tab here. And I'm just going to go into a work order task. And then open up one of these. Um, and, and in my filter, um, I'm going to apply my filter there. Uh, the filter I wanted was priority is critical, right? And if I run this filter, I'm able to right click this right here, this query condition, and then just copy the query. If I go back to mobile card builder, I can just copy and paste. Okay. But the important thing is you can't, um, in order for the mobile card builder to know where this condition is being applied, you actually need to pick um, which element uh, it is applying to. So I want the condition to apply to this number field here. And if you look at our left hand nav, it's highlighting. Um, the number text element, it's indicating to me that the number of this element is called row underscore one underscore right. Okay. So all I have to do is um, uh, write out one row one right equals one. Uh, I know that party is one because I used that query condition earlier, right? Copy query paste. And that gives me an idea of what that uh, query is. Uh, let's rename this again. Um, highlights number when one. Okay. And then we'll go and add this. Now that just defines uh, the condition. Now you actually want to trigger or you want to define what is happening when that condition is met. So um, I have this new uh, UI rule here. Uh, I'm going to click this little um, apply actions to selected element. And I think I need to zoom out a little bit. But here are the options that you can do. You can hide this field. You can change the text color, change the background color. Um, let's change the text color to red. OK, and then we'll save this. Um, so whenever there is a task where priority is one, I expect that this number is going to be, um, the text of this is going to be highlighted red. OK, so let's save. And then I'm going to refresh my app. And I should be able to see it. Um, let's see, did I miss anything? Um, the condition is when, oh, whoops. Um, so here's my mistake. So 
I set this condition on the, the number element. I actually want the priority element, right? Because we want priority to be one, not number equals one. So I just have to alter this a little bit. Um, the priority is called row one left two. So let's just update this. Row one left two. We'll update and then save. And now my that should trigger it. Hey, hey David, when you when you updated that, you took out your equals one part of the condition. Oops. Equals one. Good cat. <clears throat> and then we'll give it another refresh. And there it is. Okay. So I was able to, you know, highlight this number field just by applying these UI rules inside of mobile card builder. It's a much faster experience now uh, if you want to apply UI. Um, UI styling or apply any policies. Okay, so that was our first use case. Um, the second thing I want to show you is how do I create a policy to you know let's let's hide a field on our card when uh, you know the state of this is uh, assigned or accepted. So let's say uh, on my work order task for the screen, um, let's say that this location field isn't relevant to me um, as soon as it's accepted or assigned because I can see that field in my detail screen, okay? It's just cluttering up my app and I just wanna see the fields that I actually need to see, okay? So I'm gonna hide this location field anytime that the state is accepted or assigned, okay? So I'm gonna create a new UI rule um, uh, here and we'll call this hide location when state is uh, accepted or assigned. Okay. Uh, and then to build this condition, let's use this query builder. Uh, we'll change this to states is one of uh, assigned and accepted. We'll run this. We'll copy the query. And then let's see what this looks like. So uh, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this in 16 and 17. I don't need that state, I just want this right here. Um, and then I need to def uh, select which text element is this condition being applied to. I want state, and if you look at our left hand nav, um, it says state is row one left one, okay? So let's do row one left one equals that query condition. And then we'll name this again, um, hide location when state is uh, assigned or accepted, and then we'll save. Okay. Um, and now we need to define what uh, what is the action that's being applied to it, right? The role action. So we'll open up this apply actions to select element. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Um, and then I want to be able to hide this element, okay? Oh, this isn't, uh, so notice that by, uh, you know, I, I'm clicking on the state field right now and I'm clicking hide. So it's gonna hide that state element. I don't wanna hide state, I wanna hide location. And then I'll click on this apply actions to select element and then click hide element. And that you'll see this ye little yellow trigger to um, see that it's being applied to this uh, text element here. And it actually gives you a preview. You can see that you don't see the location field. So I know that it's working correctly. Okay. So let's go ahead and save this. Um, and I, if I refresh my screen, I should be able to see it. Um, Let's see. So it's not showing up. Let's see what, what's going on. You uh, mentioned that you have an equal sign um, to take out the equal sign. It should just oh, be yes. row one left. <laughs> Good catch. So if I update this without the equal sign, that should work. And then if we refresh, there it is. So you can see that the location field is now hidden. Okay. Um, and the reason why the location on the work in progress isn't hiding just because we didn't define that in the condition. Okay, so it's working as expected.
<clears throat> so that was our second use case. Um, so I showed you how to use UI uh, mobile card builders to apply UI styling as well as policies to your cards, okay? But what if I wanted to apply policies to my input form screens? So when an agent goes into the work order task and they wanted to you know, update this record or a short description or a party, how do I apply policies to those inputs, right? So let's say um, I don't want to give the, my agents the ability to be able to go in and update the short description. I want it to be a read-only um, input, right? Because really, they should be working in the activity stream. Um, they shouldn't update the short description. So how would I go about doing that? Um, I'm going to have to do this on platform UI, OK? Um, and uh, we're going to build the mobile UI role um, with this UI 16. Uh, interface. Uh, so I'm going to look up uh, mobile UI rules. I'm going to zoom in a little bit just to make it easier to see. And I'm going to create a new mobile UI role. Okay. Um, and we'll call this, um, let's say, hide short, oh, no, sorry, um, uh, make short description read only. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to go down to this parent here. Well, I'm going to go to this parent table um, and go to parameter screen. Parameter screen is the user, uh, the input form screen, and mobile views is for your mobile cards. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to select the parent, which is asking, you know, what it, which screen, which um, uh, input form screen do you want to apply this uh, mobile UI rule to? And I know that this input form screen is called update work order task. So we'll find this. And then we'll select that. Um, it's going to trigger on load. And then we'll, let's submit this for now. And then we'll modify our condition. Uh, Um, I'm not going to apply any conditions yet. Let's create a mobile UI role action just to confirm that this works. Okay. So it's going to ask for a target. Um, uh, as well as the operation and the value. Okay. So I'll start by filling in the operation just to see what are all the available policies that I can apply to this input form screen. And you can see that, you know, I can do, um, uh, field calculations, I can do date calculations, make the field mandatory or make it read only. I want read only. Okay. And it knows that it's going to target um, one of these two fields. Uh, I want the short description to be read only. And then the value is going to be true. Okay. To make this work. Um, and if you're not sure, you know, what the value is supposed to be, you can also always go into product docs, uh, look up mobile UI rules. And then scroll down to creating um, mobile UI role actions. And it'll tell you for each one of those policies, you know, what is the expected value and, you know, what is the definition of them? Uh, if I go down to read only, you can see that, you know, you just have to set the value to true. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and submit this now. <clears throat> And now if, uh, I believe this should work, um, I'm gonna test this just to make sure it works. I'm gonna refresh and I'm gonna go into a work order task and I'm gonna try to update one of these. And you can see that th this agent no longer has the capability to edit this field, okay? If I go next, I can still update the priority. Okay. Oops, don't know why I failed, but. Um, okay. Uh, so you can also apply conditions to these mobile UI rules as well. Um, what, let's say that, um, you know, if the, um, let's say if the priority is one, uh, or two, uh, actually, no, let's, let's set it so that anytime the priority is one, 
the short description will be read only. That way I can de uh, determine whether it works just for this record or uh, if it's broken. So I want to go back into my work order task. I'm going to create a new query condition. And I'm going to set my priority to critical. We'll run this, copy the query condition, um, and it's one. So all I have to do is uh, I'll copy this exact query and then paste that. Um, and now if I save this, it should work. So if I refresh my screen, um, what I'm currently expecting is the agent should still be able to uh, update the source description for these tasks where the, the, the priority is two. But if they try to update this one, um, it should be read only. So let's test this record for high. If I update this, I can still update the short description, okay? But if I go into critical and update this, it's currently read only, okay? So that's a huge um, value added to, you know, being able to uh, apply your policies and set your conditions using mobile UI rules. Um, there's quite a few limitations uh, using the old mobile UI policies, but with this new concept and new, new tables, you're able to do so much more, okay? Um, but that kind of wraps up the, the main use cases that I want to cover for today. Uh, are there any questions in the chat? Um, David, were there any questions, or Ian, were there any questions uh, that we want to highlight in the chat? Hi. Uh, yes, I, I see a question first from Mohit around, can UI rules be used to add or remove field choice values just like we can do in client scripting? And um, so we currently, um, you know, David, correct me if I'm wrong here, but currently we cannot um, modify the choice list. We, in terms of client scripting, we don't have the same capability in mobile right now. Um, I'm trying to think of some workarounds. Um, I know you could create multiple fields um, with different choice values and show or hide, but um, it's not probably not a sustainable approach for this use case. Uh, correct. I, I don't think we have that ability to. So whatever choice values that's available on the platform, um, those are the values that's going to be pulled over. Um, I don't think we have that supported uh, to be able to do that today. And then David, is that correct? Are you aware of that? No, that, that is my understanding as well. Okay. Uh, but uh, with that said, um, please open up an idea on the idea portal, um, just so that you know it is on our backlog and our internal teams can kind of talk more about that. Uh, we have a question from Sarah. How are we able to pull up the mobile view when working on it? Like David's screen on the left. Um, how are we able to pull up the mobile view? Oh, um, all I'm doing is I'm using a Mac laptop. If you're asking how to pull up this mobile device, I'm just using QuickTimes, which is you know, built in with the Mac. And uh, if you do uh, movie recording, um, that allows me to share my screen. Um, I think if you're looking for an emulator, uh, we don't officially support any emulators for our mobile apps. We recommend that you're always using our mobile apps for uh, to be able to test. Um, but with that said, um, looking through the mobile community, I have seen some, uh, you know, external organizations use uh, emulators like uh, P Cloudy or something else. But just know that we don't officially support those. You can also use um, if you don't have a a Mac and a basically if you don't have QuickTime. There's um, for Android. There's one called Screen. St screen stream over http i think it just goes through your browser it's an eight you put in http and it um, shows whatever's on your uh, phone so you can use that for like android with a windows if you don't have um, mac uh, that's not on iphone but there's another one on iphone if you're using a windows machine that is um, 
it starts with an R. I'll have to look it up. But there are some other uh, apps that you can download that are free um, that just show that either you add the app also to your computer or you use it through your browser and it will emulate or show essentially what you're ever you're doing on your um, on your phone. Reflector, thank you. Yes, ah, Reflector, okay. that's it. So Reflector will work with um, both iPhone and Android. Um, so if you have, if you don't have quick time, um, but you have an iPhone, you can use Reflector as well. And then it looks like Ken uses Let's View as well. So lots of options, uh, so just, you know, take a look. Um, any other questions? Uh, can you set the label on the card element label from a script? Label. Uh, David, do you, would you know the answer to that uh, on the top of your head? Uh, so I, I'd like to uh, ask a little clarity. What we mean when we say card element label? Oh. Are we talking the the actual um, uh, ID that that David was referencing from the the content tree? Uh, Ken, I've allowed you to talk, so just unmute and feel free to help clarify. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. How's it going? So uh, I'm getting the, the values from a table, and I want to set the, uh, the labels to those values that I'm getting from the table. And I can do that on text elements. Um, but I was wondering if I could configure button uh, labels. Yeah, and again, just to clarify, you're you're talking, Dave. Can you go back to? Do you still have Mobile Car Builder open? Yep. Um, so, are you are you referring to the like the in the content tree there? You have like view group, text group one, um, row one, left two. What David was using in the condition builder? Yes. But yeah, so those those values are in the JSON itself. So if you have a script that is editing the JSON uh, based on the table values, that should work exactly the same. Even with- uh, so I, I, I don't know the technical functionality there, but if you already have something that is editing the, the card template JSON, this would work exactly the same way. And it wouldn't uh, matter whether it was a button element, I mean, a, you know, a function or, or a, uh, a text element. It it should not. So those values come from the actual template JSON, and they correspond to the uh, the cell ID and the ID that's in the JSON. So if you change those in the JSON and then open it up in Card Builder, Card Builder will recognize those IDs and um, update the necessary background records for like slots and slot attributes and um, card element attributes accordingly. I have one other question on a, um, can you do like uh, dynamic choices, like uh, say for like assignment group and the user changes the assignment group, it changes the value in the assigned twos that are related to that assignment group? Uh, Ian, isn't he referring to uh, reference qualifiers or advanced yes, reference? Yes, yes, yes. Um, I know that advanced reference qualifiers are supported for input form screen starting San Diego. So that's that's on the roadmap. It's coming in San Diego. Yes, San Diego. So it should be available if you as soon as you upgrade. Okay. Thank you very much. Cool. Awesome. Uh, so it looks like that's all of our questions. Um, thanks everyone for uh, for joining in today and the gurus for helping out. Um, let's go ahead and wrap up. Uh, again, it, it's. Uh, a great way to share feedback with us is to let us know in our post session survey. So you have a couple minutes, just let us know if these topics are relevant to you or if they're helpful. Um, and then, you know, there's also, you have the, the ability to share what kind of topics you want to see in the future as well. Okay. So definitely let us know in our post session surveys. Um, also, if you're new to our Academy series, just a reminder that we do upload these um, onto YouTube, which you can find on our mobile community site. So make sure you subscribe to our community forum, register to our App Academy series and you'll get the notifications on our latest updates. Um, again, mobile classic migration office hours, we host those every Wednesday um, at 9.30 a.m. PST. So if you have more questions that we couldn't answer today, join us tomorrow morning. This is an open forum where you can come and ask any question related to your mobile classic migration. So if you're facing any issues, have any questions, 
or need general migration guidance, um, definitely join us tomorrow morning by registering on our mobile community site. With all that said, thank you everyone for joining in today and we hope to see you at our next academy. Thanks everyone.